Hey, what's up everybody? If you're new here, my name's Ryan with the Rise and Grind Workshop, and this right here is our new X-Tool S1. This is a 20 watt diode laser. And in this video, we're gonna go ahead and unbox this X-Tool laser engraver. You guys will get a first look at what comes inside of this box and what to expect when yours arrives. And right before we dive into this video, I just wanna give a quick thank you to the amazing team over at Xtool. They're the ones that made this video possible for us today. They did send out this unit for us to review. So let's go ahead and dive right into today's video. Now let's go ahead and pop this really cool green cover and show you what's under the hood. Now I've been extremely fortunate enough here in the Rise and Grind workshop to work with a couple laser engraver manufacturers and I've unboxed a couple different of these lasers right here on this YouTube channel and one of the things that really stands out to me so far with the X-Tool brand is their fit and finish. They've really paid a lot of attention to detail in the way they package and ship these items out. I feel like I'm getting the Apple experience. They have some nice high quality cardboard. Everything is clear and concise. Everything is labeled. Now, like I mentioned earlier in the video, this is the X-Tool S1. This is a diode laser. This particular unit is the 20 watt. And later in the video, I'm gonna show you how you install that laser head. And I'm gonna show you how you can actually swap out additional laser heads. That's one of the neat features with going with a diode laser. You are not gonna have a big, large glass tube and have to worry about a messy water chiller. Me personally, I'm a big fan of the color green, so I actually love their marketing and packaging. This little box right here is gonna just be some sample materials. They've got some acrylic in here. Uh, really neat when they send this stuff out. A lot of times people don't even know what they can laser engrave, or they just simply forget to buy some product. They get their laser all set up and they have to order some supplies online. So this is just a little great starter kit for you. So once you get this thing up and running, you can actually get making some stuff. And next up, we're gonna have every favorite male's accessory, and that's gonna be the manual and the instructions. Cause you know, we all read these. And just for quick clarification, this is the 20 watt unit and this is the basic starter kit. And moving right along to the smaller green X toolbox. This is gonna be your little accessory kit. This is gonna have some spare hardware, your USB drive, some grease for the rails, etc. We'll go over this a little bit later. Now, one of the advantages of going with a diode laser over a CO2 laser is gonna be the simplicity of setting this machine up. If you guys follow my channel, you've already seen how we set up a fiber laser and how we set up a CO2 laser. As I mentioned earlier, you will not need to be dealing with any type of glass tube or external water chiller. Now let's go ahead and talk about electrical requirements and needs. That's one of the really nice things about this compact laser. It's gonna include all the proper cables and supplies, and this unit is gonna run off of your standard US 110, 115 voltage. And depending on how you elect to attach your PC or your laptop to this laser engraver, they do include some basic cables. It's gonna be a USB connection for this unit. Now I touched on this earlier. This is a diode laser, not a CO2 or a fiber, and this is actual the laser module right here. So you will notice I do not have a large glass tube that is gonna have to be filled with water. I don't have to worry about aligning any mirrors. I don't have to worry about any of that. A little bit later, we're gonna show you how to install this laser head and how to swap it out for additional laser heads. And last but not least, one of the most important things you can have on your laser engraver is an error assist and the basic kit does come with this little box right here, and it does come with like a little quarter inch airline. When you're doing things like leather hat patches, you really don't want a bunch of the soot building up or blowing all around the leather. That's where you'd wanna turn your air assist down, and then when you do your final pass cut through, you can turn the air assist up, and again, this one, it works automatically, a really cool feature on this diode laser engraver, and when we get this all set up later in the video, I will show you how this works. And this particular laser unit does come with an onboard pump that will extract those fumes out your window. And again, later in the video, we'll get that all set up. So first things first, let's go ahead and get the air pump extraction hose attached to the back of the laser. This is the little accessory kit that came in the small green box I was talking about earlier. We're gonna go ahead and grab the little Allen wrench out of that. You've got four Allen bolts right here on the back of this laser unit. So we're gonna go ahead and remove those really quick. And again, if you're gonna exhaust your laser fumes out a window, this is the setup you're gonna do. If you have a HEPA filter or some type of indoor filtration system, you'd have to look at the manufacturer settings on that unit and see how to attach that to this unit. It's pretty self-explanatory, but there is a little notch right here that you're gonna align with the little notch right here. It's a male versus female fitting, so it can only go in one way. Once you've got that in there, go ahead and reinstall that hardware. 
And the bolts do have a little bit of Loctite actually pre-installed. You don't want to strip anything out right here. On the back side, there's a little press fitting. You're gonna go ahead and find your air hose that came with the laser. You'll notice that you can decompress this little fitting. So what you're gonna, the way these work, you wanna press that fitting in with one finger and then push with your other hand. You'll feel that insert, you'll feel it slightly engage into that hole. Give it a quick little tug and it should not pull back out. It's that simple. Now be very careful when attaching the air hose to the back of the laser unit. You're gonna wanna go with the hole that is on top that shows the actual air coming out. This is a fire suppression. You do not wanna install it right here. So again, make sure you install it in the top. And you're just gonna repeat that same entire process. Press down on the fitting, push in. You're gonna feel it make that nice connection. Make sure it's seated nice and well. Give it a quick tug. And that's how simple setting your air assist is. Okay, now we need to get power to the laser. You're gonna go ahead and grab the supplied AC adapter. You're gonna plug the end of the cable right into the adapter. Then you're gonna take the male end and there's a little female end right here. Go ahead and insert that into the laser. So now we have our power supply plugged into the laser and we have our air assist unit plugged in as well. Once again, go back into your little X-Tool accessory. This is gonna be the X-Tool dongle. There are two of them inside of here. You don't wanna lose this. Make sure you insert that. There, it says X-Tool right here, and there's a little key icon, and it's gonna look exactly like the key icon you see down here. Go ahead and get that inserted into that USB slot as well. Now, I'm gonna be setting up this laser engraver with my MacBook Pro, and on the back side of this unit, I'm gonna plug the USB-C into the USB-C port. This cable is a nice one that has a 90, so your cable's not just sticking out the back of the laser and gonna get smashed if you wanna put this thing up close against the wall. And you're gonna go ahead and just insert that right into the USB-C. Now that we've got all the cables ran correctly, let's go ahead and open this cover and I'll show you how to get this 20 watt laser module installed. Once you have the cover open, locate the bright yellow stickers on the left and right side of the machine. On the diagram, you're gonna see two Allen bolts going through this little rubber stopper. The reason these little rubber stoppers are in here was to prevent that gantry from moving during transport and damaging it. Once again, those are the small attention to details that I'm noticing with the X-Tool brand. And just for a quick visual reference, these are the two rubber stops you'll be looking for. They With have both those stops removed, you can reach in and gently grab the gantry and start sliding it towards you. This is gonna allow us to gain access to mount the laser. Now, before we install this laser head, I wanna share something very important with you. This is a diode laser, and this is the laser right here. We're gonna install this really quick with two screws and the proper cables. One of the advantages of a diode laser, if you would like to increase the strength, you can purchase a 40 watt diode laser, simply remove this and install the 40 watt. You now have a 20 watt and a 40 watt. You can keep the existing machine. You're gonna see how quick and easy it is to install one of these laser heads in just one second. Now that we have the gantry out and can get the laser head installed, it's very simple. You're gonna locate that quarter inch air tubing line. You're gonna slide that right up here on this little nipple. Make sure it's seated nice and flush. You don't want any leaks right here. Continuing along with X-Tool simplicity, you've got a little plastic plug and that can only go in one way so you can't mess that up. Just make sure you get those pins lined up before you send it home. You should hear a nice little click and that should be seated just like so. Next up on the back of the gantry here, you're gonna see two little slots or channels and a nipple on the back of the laser head. Simply align that nipple with that channel. Once you're satisfied you're in the right location, that laser head will drop right down. Give it a quick double check and make sure it's seated properly. Reach back into that little accessory container and you're gonna locate two of these Allen head screws and go ahead and use that little Allen tool. And you're gonna go ahead and lightly get these started. Again, take your time and make sure these go in nice and smooth. You do not want to cross thread these. And they do have a small dab of Loctite pre-installed. So you're only going to need to get these snug. 
Again, don't want to over tighten it, but at the same time, you don't want to make it too loose where this thing's rattling or it could give you some jitters later on when you're engraving. Now my S1 20 watt model came with the basic kit and that also included this really nice honeycomb. It's kind of personal preference whether you like to have some of those V blades down in the bottom or whether you like having this nice honeycomb insert. I typically always operate with the honeycomb, so we're gonna go ahead and simply slide that into position right now. Well, ladies and gentlemen, I don't know about you, but I'm getting pretty excited. Up to this point in the video, getting this thing set up and ready to use has been extremely easy. Drop a comment below, let me know what you're thinking. Are you still feeling a little scared to pick up your first laser engraver? So for right now, we have the laser moved over close to a power source. I'm gonna go ahead and apply power to the machine, make sure this thing fires up. If I've done everything correctly, we should see the unit fire up, no magic smoke, and that laser should go ahead and find its predetermined home location. And here we go, three, two, one. Hey! There we go. All right, you guys, now that we confirmed we have no power issues, don't be like me and jump ahead. You're gonna to wanna to jump inside of your little plastic accessory box that came with the laser, and you're gonna locate this little guy right here. This is your auto focus tool. It has two small diameter magnets on the back side of it. Simply find those same two diameter magnets on the side of your diode laser head. And again, that's gonna have a small little nipple that protrudes out. It can only get installed one way. It'll have a nice click in fit. That's how you know you have it installed right. And it should have a nice little spring up and down. Well, congratulations. If you've been following along at this point, you should now have your new X-Tool S1 diode laser all powered up and everything is working as it should. We are now gonna move along and get the software installed so you can actually start making really cool projects with your new laser. Now we here at the Rise and Grind Workshop personally use Lightburn. I know most of you probably don't have that software program just yet. So for this video, we're simply gonna show you how to install Xtool's Creative Space. It's a free software program. You're gonna to go to xtool.com and you're gonna click right here on software. You're gonna then choose your own operating system. This is a plug and play system. Simply install that software program, plug your laser into your computer and it should automatically detect and find that for you. Researching, purchasing and setting up your laser is the easy part. Actually learning how to deep dive inside of this laser and completely understand this and make a product you're extremely proud of, that's really the challenging part. And when I say challenging, it's really one of the easiest CNC machines to learn out there, so don't be afraid. And here's my promise to you guys. Over the next six months, I'm gonna start putting out a lot more content where I am actually physically using these lasers inside of the workshop on personal projects that I make. And I would like to share with you some more in-depth tutorials on how to set up your software, such as Lightburn or Creative Space, and some basic tips and tricks. We're also gonna show you where to get a test card, why you need to get a test card, and if you're using the Lightburn software, I will even show you how to make your own test card. The next steps are getting your software calibrated, the machine calibrated, then we're gonna to wanna to make some test cuts on some sample material just to make sure everything is working properly. So again, I just wanted to give a really big shout out to the amazing team over at Xtool. Their communication was incredible. They sent out this machine ASAP. And as you guys saw in this unboxing, I'm calling this the Apple experience. It was an incredibly well fit and finished product. So there you have it, ladies and gentlemen. That is gonna complete our ultimate unboxing and setup of the X-Tool S1 laser. If you guys are still with me, you must be seriously considering purchasing a laser. So if that's the case, you might as well save some money and use my discount code. I will have a link in the description below. Why don't you head on over there, take a look at the X-Tool website, the S1 laser, and some of the additional models they have as well. And listen up guys, this is extremely important. If you guys wanna see video content that caters to you and your needs, simply drop a comment below and let me know what you need help with and I'll make a video for you. At the end of the day, we are putting this content out there for you guys, the audience, so I really do appreciate each and every single one of you that watch and support this channel. If you're new here, go ahead and give us a like and make sure you follow so you do not miss all the additional details that we share on this new X-Tool S1 diode laser engraver.